Just yesterday, within our exclusive pro community, a member shared a fantastic video idea inspired by the carousel featured on Ben Mingo's portfolio. Today, we're going to bring that idea to life. And guess what? We're doing it all using pure JavaScript. No plugins or libraries. We'll make sure to dynamically update the active item based on what comes into view at the top left corner of the viewport. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's kick things off by adding a container div. Nested within, we'll introduce a wrapper named Carousel Items to house our slider components. Directly below, we'll pop in an active item div to spotlight the current selection in our carousel. Now, to give our page a bit more structure, let's roll out a footer. You can slot in any content or copy that suits your taste. We're including this just to inject some dynamism and balance to the layout. And just so you know, we'll be generating the carousel items through JavaScript, so no stress on that front. All right, we're all set with our markup. Time to deck it out with some styles. Let's kick things off by targeting all elements with the universal selector. We'll zero out the margins and paddings to ensure a consistent layout. We'll also set the box sizing to border box. Next up, we'll style the body. We're setting both the width and height to fill the entire viewport using 100VW and 100VH respectively. To avoid any unwanted scroll bars, we'll set the overflow property to hidden. And for typography, we're opting for the elegant new Montreal. Moving on to our carousel. For the carousel items wrapper, we're setting its position to fixed, ensuring it stays anchored to the top left corner. Thanks to the display flex property, the items within will be laid out in a neat horizontal row. And to give each item some breathing space, we're introducing a gap of 5 pixels. Now, for each individual carousel item, we're defining a width of 60 pixels, then a height of 80 pixels, giving us a neat rectangular shape for every item in our carousel. Let's style the active item. Its position is set to fixed. Specifically, we want it to sit 30 pixels from the left and 36 pixels up from the bottom. This div is more prominent with a width of 450 pixels and a height of 550 pixels, making it the focal point of our carousel. For all the images within our design, we're ensuring they stretch to completely fill their parent dimensions by setting both width and height to 100%. To preserve the aspect ratio and avoid any unwanted stretching or squishing, we're employing the object fit cover property. Shifting our attention to the footer, we're styling it with a fixed position to firmly anchor it to the bottom left specifically 12 pixels up from the base. The width stretches the full viewport. Set a z-index of 2. Thanks to display flex, the content within the footer aligns seamlessly in a horizontal row. Each footer item is designed as a flex container, distributing space equally among its children with the flex one. Also adding a generous gap of 100 pixels between individual footer items. For the paragraph elements, we're giving text transformation of uppercase, the line height to 100%, and the font size to a crisp 12 pixels. All set with the CSS. All right, diving into our JavaScript, let's start by targeting and referencing our DOM elements. First, we'll grab our carousels wrapper by selecting the carousel items and the active item to reference our active carousel item. To dynamically showcase the image of our active item, we'll create an image element and we'll name this active item image. Lastly, we'll append this newly created image to our active item to ensure it's displayed in our carousel. We'll utilize a for loop that runs from 1 to 100, symbolizing the number of items we wish to generate. We first create a div element, which will serve as each individual carousel item. We then assign it a class name of carousel item for styling and referencing purposes. Subsequently, for each carousel item, we'll also create an image element. We'll dynamically set its source, or SRC, pointing it to the corresponding image in our images directory. After setting up our image, we append it to its parent carousel item div. Finally, the populated carousel item is then appended to our main carousel items wrapper, ensuring all our generated items are neatly placed within our carousel. Remember, this approach efficiently loads 100 images into our carousel with just a few lines of code. Alright, next we'll delve into a bit of a utility function that's pretty handy for smooth animations and transitions. It's called the lerp function, which stands for linear interpolation. The lerp function takes in three parameters, start, which represents our starting value, end, the final or target value, and t, which is our interpolation factor, generally a value between 0 and 1. The formula inside computes a value between the start and end based on the weight of t. In essence, it gives us a value partway between two numbers. This is particularly useful for smoothly transitioning values. Then, we set up a couple of variables. Current x is initialized to 0. This will track our current horizontal position in the carousel. Last scroll y, also set to 0. 
will monitor our last vertical scroll position. These foundational elements set the stage for the scrolling effects we're about to implement. We've attached a wheel event listener to the window to capture user scrolling. Within this listener, we're updating the last scroll Y with the scroll's magnitude. To ensure we don't scroll beyond our content, we determine the maximum possible horizontal scroll, termed as max scroll. Finally, by adjusting last scroll Y, we maintain its value within the limits of zero and max scroll, thereby ensuring a smooth and bounded carousel movement based on the vertical scroll actions of the user. Next, we're setting up two variables, last active and current leftmost item, to keep track of our carousel item states. The check and update active item function scans through each carousel item to determine which item is currently at the forefront when scrolling. If an item's left edge is within a 10-pixel range from the viewport's left edge, it becomes our focus. When detected, we first remove the active class from the previously highlighted item and assign it to the newfound one. We then update the active item image to mirror the image of the active carousel item. This approach keeps our carousel dynamic, always highlighting the most prominent item on the screen. In our animate function, we're blending the current horizontal position with our tracked vertical scroll using the lerp function, providing a smooth, interpolated value. This newly computed current X then drives the horizontal translation of our carousel items. As we move them, we periodically check and potentially update the highlighted item in our carousel. To keep this animation loop going and ensure buttery smooth transitions, we employ the request animation frame method, continuously invoking the animate function. Lastly, we kickstart this animation loop by calling animate once outside the function. Wrapping up, we've successfully built our carousel from scratch. For those interested in diving deep, the source code is available via the link in the description. And here's a tip, with a pro membership, you'll not only unlock this source code but also gain exclusive access to monthly website template. Thank you for tuning in, and happy coding!